Hi, it's Professor Adam. Let's talk about the Jan Teller effect. This is an octahedral complex. Hexa aqua copper 2 with six sigma only bonding water ligands bonded to a central copper ion, in this case, copper 2. For an octahedral complex, we have five frontier orbitals, which are split into three orbitals, which have the symmetry T2G, the triply degenerate DXY, DXZ, and DYZ orbitals. In the case of a complex like the hexa aqua copper, water is a sigma only ligand, so the T2G orbitals are non bonding. The EG orbitals are strongly anti bonding with respect to the metal ligand sigma bonds, the DZ squared, and the dx squared minus y squared. When we have a D9 complex like this, it soon becomes apparent that there is only one open space in the D orbitals. A D9 complex spectroscopically should be identical to a D1 complex since there is only one transition possible because there is only one space for the electron. When we look at the absorption spectrum of copper 2 in aqueous solution, there is one band around 900 nanometers. However, in this band, we can clearly see a split, which indicates that there are two transitions under the curve. The split in the absorption spectrum is the origin of the Jan Teller distortion effect, which states that complexes with degenerate electronic states will distort to remove degeneracy. For our complex, this means that for the EG set in the octahedral complex, we have three electrons which can be placed into these orbitals in two ways, which is a degeneracy. Nature often moves to break degeneracy, which brings about the Jan Teller theorem and how it works. The Jan Teller theorem tells us that complexes with degenerate electronic states will distort to remove this degeneracy. Degenerate electronic states are partially filled degenerate orbital sets, for example, the EG or T2G. They are not partially filled orbitals. Partially filled EG orbitals are more likely to cause distortions than partially filled T2G sets. On the left, we have a predicted molecular orbital diagram for our copper D9 octahedral complex. We can do an axial elongation pulling the two water ligands on the z-axis out a little and consider what happens to the octahedral splitting diagram. What happens is that we have broken the degeneracy of the orbitals. The T2G set split a little and the EG set split a lot. The DZ squared lowers in energy because it is stabilized by the ligands being further away, which weakens the metal ligand bond, reducing the anti-bonding character of the DZ squared orbital. Elongation along the z-axis causes a slight contraction of the metal ligand bonds in the equatorial xy plane, causing the dx squared minus y squared orbital to become more antibonding. The degeneracy is now broken, and there is only one low energy way to place the electrons in the 5d orbitals. It is also now possible to see the origin of the two transitions at 900 nanometers one from the dxy orbital to the b1g orbital, and the other from the eg up to the b1g vacancy. Now this is where there is a problem with the Jan Teller theorem. If the geometry distorts, then was the complex ever actually octahedral, or was it just a case that the point group was assigned incorrectly? I'll leave that up to you to decide. There are some electron configurations that are more susceptible to having these kinds of geometry distortions than others. The Jan Teller effect is strong when you would predict a partially occupied antibonding orbital. For example, high spin D4, the geometry would distort to break the EG degeneracy. Low spin D7 will distort so that the EG orbitals will not be degenerate and of course the very common D9, such as our copper 2 complex here. There are also weak Jan Teller effects, like the D1, where the degeneracy is in a non-bonding or weakly antibonding orbital, but these are usually non-bonding in the sigma-only case, so observing the effect experimentally is difficult. Here is a summary table of the D electron configurations and their susceptibility to Jan Teller distortions. 
For our copper 2 example, initially only elongation was considered to break the degeneracy, but compression along one of the axes would also break the degeneracy. Both compression and elongation can satisfy the need to break degeneracy, but the Jan Teller theorem cannot predict which will happen to a distorting complex, though for copper 2, elongation is more common. The distortions considered so far have all been tetragonal, which occur along one fourfold axis only. Other distortions, such as rhombic and trigonal, along a threefold rotational axis or one of the faces also exist. Let's check comprehension. 